you are Dominic. I'm Dominic, yep. And um, tell me a little bit about the history of this store. Well, we Scapoletti's have been serving the community for over 100 years. Sammy's going to be the fourth generation. Okay. And what kind of meats and, and uh, products do you serve We're in a full them? butcher shop. We mainly sell, our, every, we're known for our Italian sausage, and we, you know, we do uh, a lot of strips, New York strips, uh, sta tenderloins, uh, at the holiday time, prime ribs. So we're going to make a great prime rib for the holidays. Where do you begin? Well, first you get it out and you, you trim it up, you get it like, it's like so. Get Tell me about that piece. That's, this, is that, that a good this piece? It's actually a rib roast, prime rib. Right. And um, it's just about a six pounder, six, six and a half pounds. Choice? Uh, all choice. Okay. Choice or higher, yes. And tell me what you like in a prime rib. Um, I like to, usually you just, you have to season them very well. Season them with a lot of salt, a lot of black pepper. You know, on the outside, you always make sure you cook it with the fat side up. Okay. Fatty There's a lot up. of fat on that. Yep. You like ribs on or ribs off? Um, everybody has a preference. We like the boneless. That's the one we always cook. Why the is that? Well, for some, I mean... It's just easier to cook, and I think it's, you know, it's a lot easier to cook than a, than a standing rib. And some people like their prime rib really rare, some like exactly. it well done. Yep. Let's talk about that for a quick second. Yep. Usually with a bone-in prime rib, it has to cook a little bit longer than a boneless prime rib. Because of the bone, it has to get through the bone. They're both excellent pieces of meat, both of them. Excellent. Okay. Wonderful. Now, you like yours really rare. I sure do. Okay. And and so this process, this cooking process your dad's going to show us, gives us both. The best of both worlds? It does. You know, like we always tell people, um, you're better to cook it rare because you can always, after you slice it, for the people who like it a little bit more well done, you can always have, you know, your uh, jus on top of the stove and, you know, lay it in there and everybody gets a what, little bit through. Everybody gets what they once want. once you overcook it, you can't take it back. And that's the truth. Yep. Now tell me this. Um, your method I've never done before. I always try to cook it really long and slow. Right. Well, low we, and slow, we've they tried say. many different methods. There's a slow method and the stuff. We found that we've tried and had excellent results is we preheat the oven to 500 degrees mm -hmm. and we cook it for five minutes a pound at, at 500 degrees. So if you have a six pound roast, for instance, you would cook it for five minutes a pound for uh, 30 minutes at 500 degrees. And then what? And then you would turn the oven off and leave it in there for another maybe um, maybe another hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes. Nobody can touch the oven though, right? No, you can't So open you can't the door. be you cooking potatoes and... Leave the door closed, right. <laughs> okay, yeah. perfect. Everything else gets cooked I, on... I, I would say an hour for... We cooked a big one. We left it in there for an extra hour. Um, with this one here, I'd say probably the same thing. An hour would probably be more enough than it would come up medium rare. Okay, show me what you're going to do to get it ready. I'm going to get it, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to wrap some string butcher twine around it. Brings the meat together, and it cooks through, through the meat more. Cooks better through the meat. Huh, interesting. What if I don't have twine? Um, well, this is, butcher your butcher, this is the butcher's job. <laughs> okay. The butcher will do this way. When I'm doing a Good standing prime rib, I take the bone off, and then tie it back on. Got it, got okay. it. And because does it cook faster that way with once you, you take the bone off and well, then you tie yeah, it back on? Well, we've always cooked quicker than a than a uh, a standing fryer. Good to know. That's going to feed a lot of people, don't you think? This is a six pounder. If you figure about anywhere from six to eight ounces per person when okay. you're cooking a prime rib. Okay. And, and there's your finished product after. I'm okay, so you're, you're going to oven. What kind of pan do you use? Uh, just an, a, a roasting pan with a rack. Okay. And, you, and like I say, you put it in fatty side up. And you load that baby with salt and, and pepper. You Can you show us what you mean? Yeah. Okay, you take your salt and you're very liberal with the salt. Don't be afraid to season it up with the salt. Everybody's afraid of salt. Everybody's That's afraid a of salt. lot of just salt. Put a lot of salt on there. That's what makes the primary. It's about rib. a half a cup. Yeah, you put it and then do it on both sides. You season it up on both sides. You can use a kosher salt if you'd like, or a sea salt. Everybody has a different preference. And then you rub then, it in. And you rub it on. Then you take your black pepper. Lots of black pepper, right? right? So this is the this is the more of a more of a coarser black pepper. It's a really simple process. Yeah, I don't know is. why it's everyone's not, so everybody. A lot of people. Some people like to stuff it with garlic cloves. Some people use garlic powder. We like to keep it simple. You know, we don't, we don't, we're not any. We don't like to do it too too complicated. Garlic salt on the outside always yeah, gives, it a nice salt added added added. gives a little extra flavor. flavor also, if you yeah. wanted to use garlic salt along with regular salt. Garlic salt Excellent. Okay. That baby is gorgeous. Well, it's all ready, to, ready to, to go into the oven. Okay, this is where all the magic happens. We're here with Dom and his wife, Sheila. 
Sheila, thank you for participating and helping us with this experiment. Thank you. As you know, Dom seasoned the roast, he tied it. Can you tell me how you cooked it? I brought the roast to room temperature before I put it in the mm -hmm. oven for approximately an hour and a half. And then I just popped it in a preheated 500 degree oven for 30 minutes. Okay. And after 30 minutes, you shut that oven right off and then you just leave the roast in there. Do not open your oven door. Leave the roast in and just let it be in there for well, like an hour, an hour and a half. The till kind your of... thermometer reaches like 130 because when you take that roast out, it still cooks as it rests. So you don't want to leave it in too long. And you're taking it out really rare. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, let's take a look at it and see how it went. Okay. So you've rested this for how many minutes? I've rested this for 15 minutes. Perfect. Because it keeps cooking as you rest and we do not like our roast very well done. Oh, perfect. So now we're gonna follow Dom as he takes this over to the cutting board and you're gonna pull out the vegetables from the oven because tell me about, about the vegetables while he's oh, I slicing. Oh, just, just to make it look the presentation a little more special. Mm -hmm. As you plate it, um, I roasted some vegetables and I have some fennel. Got it. I have some carrots, Brussels sprouts, and scallions. And how long did you cook those? Oh, I just seasoned them with salt and pepper, a little garlic, and olive oil, and roasted them for about 30 minutes at 400. But you don't want to open up the 500 degree oven, do oh, you? Oh no, this was in my second oven. S yes. yes, second oven. So if you don't have a second oven, you might even want to do those on the stove, maybe on the well, stove top? or you could roast them at earlier the and then just, you know. Oh, that's a great idea. Just heat them up when you're ready. If anybody like usually likes it a little more well done, they would take the end cut. Okay, okay? yes. Now, my husband likes the end cut. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that would be perfect for him. But those, as you said, who don't like it that rare, can throw it back in the au jus. That's gorgeous. Now, yeah, how do butchers feel about eating there. meat that rare? Do you oh, eat it that rare yourself? Absolutely, especially prime rib. And why is that? Well, just the flavor of the prime rib is supposed to be medium rare. Mm -hmm. I always say if you overcook something, you ruin it. And this is... This is perfect. Okay, great. Now we're going to plate perfect. it with the vegetables. Yeah. Excellent. Just a quick recap of what we did to this really beautiful roast. Dominic seasoned it at the store, um, which you can naturally do at home yourself because it's just salt, pepper, and plenty of salt. And then I brought it home, rested it at room temperature for about an hour, an hour and a half let it come to room temperature, put it in a 500 degree oven for a half an hour, do not open your door, and then just leave it in another hour and 15 minutes or so. This is a six pound roast, so it depends on the size, of course. So uh, once you pull it out, let it rest for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and slice it. It's perfect. It is perfect, look at that. Nice job. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Bon appetit.